All right, let's check out the shop first. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like that phone ringing. Well, actually, let me bring... Let me uh, bring this movie down, and actually this one too. And bring... Uh, so you can see the frame count. So I need a frame counter. So you can see I'm starting at frame one for this shot, and it continues. So don't forget, I need frame counters. So let's see. This is pretty cute, but I think it's a it's a bit even. In terms of it, it's always moving, I think there could be a bit of a ring, stop, ring, and then she grabs it. So it's not always, always um, moving around. <clears throat> and then it should be it. This is a bit much. Like this, it's a lot of. A lot of um, it's a big shape here coming in. You want to be like that first frame, like just a little bit, and then the next frame this, and then the next frame that, so it doesn't um, pop so much into frame. And then watch out, you got some intersections here. And then you see she picks it up like this. You can start probably rotating the hand this way, and kind of curl your thumb around. Um, you know, so that you get the sense of the hand is going to come in like this to grab the phone. You can see the uh, the thumb coming around here. So you're getting into this a, a bit sooner. But I think that's pretty much it for the shot. It's a quick one. Um, the only thing I would also say is it's a bit of a weird... Yeah, there's a slight... Like, you have your pivots here, and then... The whole phone is up in the air, it just kind of wiggles left and right, left and right, versus it would have to pivot off of here. Imagine it's flat on the ground, and there's your pivot, and then it goes off like this, and then boom, then the pivot is here, and it goes off like that, right? That corner is down, that corner is down. And right now, it's kind of pivoting off of here, and it's never, and it's kind of moving left and right. It's not quite what it should be doing. If a, an object is bouncing around, so, something feels weird and wiggly. So just make sure that you don't have to go frame by frame and you gotta put the pivot here, pivot here, and then just go left and right, left and right. Alright, that's my last note. Let's move to the shot. This is a bit floaty here. You bring the phone there, it's better. It's definitely better. It doesn't hit her face anymore, which is good. But now it has that moment of you get to here. And then it's boo. It's, it's this long, long rotation, especially in the head. It starts to feel a bit floaty. And uh, I saw your mail. You mentioned that sometimes you already do the shoulder and offset part, but that's still not enough, and sometimes you forget it. Yeah, that's the problem is that you just gotta you gotta put up a list, like you know, have a. One, two, three, four, I gotta do this, 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 and tape that next to your monitor. And every time you do something, you follow that list. Because right now, if I look at this, right, I look at this arm. As this arm bends, there's nothing in the shoulder. There's nothing in the chest, right? When she moves her head, it seems to be all in here. And not really anything in here. I see a slight move, maybe? Also, she's doing... Let me do this here. Here, there we go. It's pretty much in a straight path, right? There's no there's no arc. She doesn't have an arc in there. You know, there's no... Like, you can do even simple bl uh, blinks. Like, it just feels all very robotic. She feels like a mannequin, like a robot moving around. There's just not enough of, a, of life in there. And it feels like you're doing pose to pose, and then the jaw goes up so you just have to start overlapping your your movements more you know it feels like very much beat this is a beat this is a beat right it's a bit funky it's a bit too floaty that gets better let's see see how much this helps just the blinks and darts so you gotta definitely have something here so so the reason I was mentioning it, just sometimes it's not quite clear to me at what point you are in the shot. Because you have blinks and darts here, so why is it not happening here? 
Is that because you don't want her to blink? But then I'm not sure about the acting choice, right? So sometimes I'm not quite sure, is this an acting choice or have you just not gotten to things yet the way you've gotten to them here? So that's why I'm asking, you know, at this point, like this is beyond blocking, right? You're, you've blocked out the scene already. So you have to start putting in all the details. So I'm not quite sure why stuff like this is in there. That's why I'm mostly confused. See, that's much better. Like I like from here on, she's totally alive. She looks, blinks. Well, what's what's around here? I will probably make this start faster. The start is a bit slow, and this feels a bit pose to pose. She goes from here to here. This moves, this moves, this moves. It's all at the same time, right? So when she's done here, she might lower her arm first, then look around to look at the phone. You have to, you have to start thinking about which body parts are moving first, um, and all based on what story do you want to tell. Same thing here. Although it's better, you have one, two, yeah, you have two frames. You could probably push. Push that. So same thing here. You have a sudden pop here. I don't see anything in the shoulders. This is a bit too straight. It feels like you're overextending your IK arm there potentially. This section is definitely better. It just still is from a technical point of view a bit tricky. But I hear you. I mean, I see your email and um, you're asking how to do that in Maya. It's a bit of a tricky thing to show it in here. So you're right. Um, but I see a lot of people having the same problems. So I'm probably just going to do... Um, like the cheat sheet that I talk about, you know, when you have next to your monitor, look at your root first, then chest and head, right? Your basic blocking. And then splines for arcs. Uh, watch your ease ins and outs. I can probably come up with a list like this and then do it in Maya and show, like, a little small examples what I mean. That's probably, probably be better. This is better. I like this. Feels like she's... Not quite here taking a step, but here it feels better. Like it's just taking that step there. So you I think you fixed that. The rotation in Y for sure. Just through here it gets a bit funky because it's still pretty much moving as one unit. That whole thing is moving. And then again she has no blinks or no darts. Eye darts, nothing. So it feels a bit dead. And it's also a bit slow. Like slow and even. Like the timing of return. Ooh. There's a bit robotic in places. You might even be able to cut it here. Right? Because you're telling the story that she's done. Imagine you're watching this. He goes, huh, how weird. Maybe a couple more frames to read it, but... Right? She's this. Oh, what's going on here? Hmm. Cut. So you might be able to cut out sooner instead of doing this whole turn. I'm not even sure you need this. Plus, it would help you too. Um, animating lights there. Let me bring up the other one. All right. Ooh, that's weird. Hmm, not quite what I had in mind. Let me bring up the frame counter. So I think the forward translation is better. I think you're you're. Um, Every now and then you have a very sharp drop in your in the root. So you can see it here. She goes forward, boop, that feels like a linear key, boom, up, boom, like that. That's a linear key. I can follow this line here, right? Boop. That's your linear key right there. So in your your Y, right? Your T Y, it suddenly does this, like on a on a linear key. There's no spline there. That's something else that I talk about where you got to look at your ease ins and outs. So for something I would be confused if you say you know the rules like ease in and out, but then how do you do it? I mean, there you can, you know, if again, I'll show it in a separate clip, but if you have a, a key that's like this, that's a linear key, you would hit your spline option and it would, if you have another key here, it would start to do this, right? You have a spline bump, but then you can move that key down and then you end up with something that's smoother. Like, I'm slightly confused if that's what you mean. Like, you don't know how to do that. And if you're not sure about the graph editor, you can always go frame by frame. You follow this. There's a line. There's a line. Whoop. And now it drops here. So you can see. Whoop, that's your spacing. Right? And then here you stop again. 
So instead of doing this and then a sudden drop and then staying, you want to introduce a frame here and a frame here, right? It's, it's basically like a bouncing ball. So if you have a bouncing ball that goes up, then you have your spacing that gets smaller, smaller, and smaller, and then it comes out again. I mean, that's the same idea. You just don't want, you don't want that sudden two frame drop here. So it's the same idea, same principle as with the bouncing ball. You just got to look at your spacing. This is not too bad. So what I would do now, now that you have the forward translation uh, that's kind of ready, you have to start adding some left and right. So every time she goes over one leg, she would move this way, right? She would be doing this. Like that's your, uh, like your hips would be up because this leg is taking all the weights. And then you have that. I'm exaggerating, it wouldn't be this big, but that's the idea, right? So every time she goes over one leg, the, tra the root has to translate over this one. Now that you're taking, sorry, going over this leg, now she has to translate over this way. So she's kind of leaning that way. Boom, same thing here. She would lean over and then lean back this way and then stop. And that stop would be also less linear. Like it, would just, it feels like you're going forward and immediately stop versus coming and maybe settling and maybe taking a step back. It doesn't have to be much, just a couple of frames. It doesn't feel like, boom. It's this crazy thing. It's not too bad, though. You have a nice overlap on the head. So it's really just one or two frames. Here, this, the arms stop a bit abruptly. Right there. That gives it that kind of bit of a hard feel. Now, what's a bit funky is you go... Now we're focusing on our hands, which is weird. And now we go on their face. So you want to do... What is this? Is this a translate? Okay, no, no. You want to do... You want to stay from here. Right, set a key, and then do your lens change. Right, this looks like a lens change, but now you're translating because I can see the parallax. I can see how this is moving. So you need to set a key here, right there. Set a key on all your camera, like translate and rotates, right, and your lens. Then you go, boop. But then now on that frame, you're already rotating the camera up, right? So if the girl is here, and this is your camera. Before that, you had a nice lean frame, but now you zoom in, and you zoom in so you only see this. So you gotta move up, but you don't translate, you wanna rotate the camera up into that point. So by the time you hit this on frame 60, or what is for me frame 60, you would already rotate up to this framing. You don't wanna translate up. That's all good. It's a bit floaty. Watch out. Your moving hold is a bit floaty on those hands. It's not too bad, though. This feels a bit weird where I see an offset. This is great. I see shoulder stuff. Great. You can push that a bit more. Just a bit more. So that's all great. But then the weird thing is that now this section stays the same. Like It feels like she's someone's holding her chin and everything drops, but it's kind of holding up her head. See that? So by the time your arms are down... That neckline here, she could be rotated down, and then that chin would be down here, and the head has come down as well. And then that way, when you do this, you can bring up the head a little bit more, and then end up with this. Although this is a bit funky again here. See this section? You're moving everything up oh, at once again. Arms, chest, neck, head. It's all moving at the same time. There are no blinks. She's not blinking. So you go back into that robot mode, which is a bit, a bit weird. But in terms of how you would have to approach offsets and body uh, involvement, this is great, right? So from here on, just look at this section. Don't look at any of this. Look at this, right? Offset, a really nice big offset. Involvement in the chest, in the shoulders, all that is top notch. That, yes, great. That's exactly what you need to do in all of your shots all the time. Just weird that it kind of it stick, stays put there and it pivots off the head. It's, it's a weird, weird thing. All right, and then let's go to your last one. Uh, let me bring up the frame counter and bring this down a bit. So, oh, there you go. All right, so that's her second time. What's she doing here? It's a weird move here. Wait, she's. 
this feels weird because you're lifting this leg, right? The moment you lift this leg, all the weight is going to be on this leg. So A, your root, your pelvis is going to be like this. Right now it's like this. It actually needs to be the other way. But then while you do that, everything moves. I guess she's pivoting off the toes for a spin. So what I would do is, here's the offset again. So you have to first lean over to your root. Opla, excuse me. So your roots. Oh, I need to draw here. So there you go. That has to happen first. I'm going to draw a couple things here. So first, your root has to translate over so that you get this angle. And while you translate over, your pelvis is going to go up because all the weight is on this leg. Now that you're ready for the unbalanced part, you can bring up this leg. And by now, when, when the leg goes over, afterwards, this foot is twisting. And the thing is, you can figure all this out if you would shoot reference. If you act this out, right, and then you analyze your reference, you would see that, well, if I do this, I have to first move over for balance. This affects my hips. Then I move my leg around, which in turn takes my roots and twists my whole body. And only then is my leg rotating around here. And watch out. Once you're here, you're overstretching your IK. You can see how it pops. It's your IK pop here in your leg, you're overstretching. That is okay. The tricky thing is that you're moving your hips away from us. So the silhouette is not as clear. It would almost be better if technically you, you know, it's kind of pointing this way. Your whole body would have to point this way. Right? She's just completely flipped. Her nose is here. Her eyes. The bowl is she's holding it here. The body, everything. So that when she <clears throat> does this, it's actually more like that. Head is here. The butt is here. Legs are here. She's holding the bowl here. Why? Because that's a cleaner silhouette. We understand because the move goes this way. And it has to go this way because of the door. It has to go this way. Right now, you're moving away from us straight. Whoops, straight away from us, which means the perspective is not really nice. The silhouette's not really nice. You don't, you kind of get it, but not really. That's a, a bit of a, a tricky silhouette there. That super sharp. Again, you have really, really harsh keys there. You can see that's boop, boop, two frames, one frame even. You have like a one frame slight ease out, boom, one frame drop, and then it stays put. So your TUI looks like it's doing one thing and then pa that and again this should not happen so look at your curves go frame by frame if you need to but yeah i'll come up with something and i can present something in maya and send it to you actually the whole class and even the um, character class that's not online everybody's suffering from the same problems it starts to feel very terminator like ba -bum -bum -ba -bum. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. but it's a cute move again all that stuff is cute it's just from a technical point of view, it's still very, very rough. Alrighty. And don't forget, even in your rough blocking, you can start adding, well, where is she, where is she looking here? Start adding in where she's looking and, and basic blinks. That is going to be a huge help just to, so I understand, well, what is she doing? Is she spaced out? Is she freaking out? Is she on drugs? Is she looking here? So all that stuff is part of your storytelling and your blocking. So that has to be in that pass as well. All right? Thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right? Thank you. Thank you.